Yeah, folks, Pino's, one of the chicks, one of the Christmas bunnies came over and I got all kinds of shit on my toolbar, but whatever. To keep the the picture size up so that you can read everything pretty good. And we got a nice shot here of Northern Lights CME action with our stratosphere. This one here is from over at... Okay, so you get the names and the credits to the photos there and everything like that. I'm not going to waste my time reading it off. Also there, and just go to Space Weather and check it out. So we are going to see some action probably on the 29th from the M2 class CME action, but it's taken longer to get here, so what, that's good news because then it does make it weaker okay, than what it looks like when it's going through space. And our seismograph does look a lot Hopefully I can scroll down here without a big old jitter, but we're really calm on the seismograph at the moment. At the moment. And okay, it's 9.48 p.m. Central Standard Time. So the graphs look a lot easier right now. Not bad. And as I say, 9.48 p.m., 12.29. As you can see, the clock down there in the corner. Okay, so let's go ahead and go. Basically, so I don't lose people's attention to the big find. Because when I was showing you the photos earlier... We got Venus in this shot, and then we've got this massive here in this shot between Mars. That's not Mars. That's Mars right there. Okay, and then there's something close to Mars, as you can see in the shot. And basically, all this CME light in space right now off of the sun makes us see this shit. Okay. And you can see this big V that seems to be there. Or we've got some humongous weird shape on that planet. Because you can see either somehow it's some fascinating, but it doesn't seem, it can't be a mirror of Venus, even though, I mean, of Jupiter, Venus, yeah. Even though Venus is pretty large, looks like some massive object between Mars and Venus. And massive as I say this, just that size alone on that one possible planet right there. And also, this planet right here below, right here, okay? Humongous. Huge, humongous. And then we got this shot down here. You got Venus and the Earth. I zoomed in on this at a thousand. So you can see this stuff here. And we're starting to wonder if what we have on the H1 and H2 high shots. As you see Jupiter and Mercury, okay, these are all C2s and Mercury's somewhere in that shot there, more than like that small object there. But that's not really true because Mercury should be in here and bright. So, it's very interesting what Mercury's looking like right now without getting much of a magnetism off of it because of the sun activity of getting big nice flashes. Okay, and I think we have another shot up here where you can end up seeing this large optic up by the sun. This is the sun. And this is current there. And you have an object right there. All that there. Almost like a twin of what we see outside of Earth. Okay, up by the sun. Large objects. And also the idea that more than likely this is a large planet or object from the supergiants next to the sun there. And we do know that this is a flare that keeps on happening. But what I'm starting to wonder, is that a flare that keeps happening? Or is that the object that is hitting the sun? up there that's doing all the marble action rolling around. So as you, you can see that there. And then also you can see this here. Other objects here. Blown up at a thousand. You can see it pretty good. And this one here. And I'm wondering if that's our big marble that we got rolling around like I've been saying. You can see that there. 
Okay, you can see that that's a planet there. I mean, dead planet, dead star, also there. And no, this is not the stuff that we know that we can see from a long distance that the Catholic Church put in the space shuttle a long time ago. Telescope to see. I think that's something like M55 or something like that. And it's not M22. Now this is more than likely that big object that we end up seeing on the X-ray shot and also that's always seen on the three behind. And I.e. also can't miss that. Now more than likely might be that what I was showing you earlier in the last video. So and also more than likely another object right there. So I'm going to give you a shot of overlays of the video that will explain. <coughs> and as you watch this you will pretty much more than likely see what I mean by overlays. This idea that you'll see the satellite shots pop in. And then they put this masking on to see the highs and lows. So every once in a while you'll see a satellite shot there, right? Well, they overlay this stuff to get the resonation to see what they want to see. And as you can see, there's some very large stuff that ends up showing up at some times and gets masked by being cut out. Okay and also CME action, but the idea this is an overlay, this is one of the gray overlays, so you'll end up seeing how small, this, well the sun's huge, but you'll see how small the sun actually is in the shot. As you can see, it's very small there. But you can see all these little planets <coughs> in material in the supergiants up around by the sun and moving around. Okay? So, and then we go to another shot, which basically colorization, but the idea that you'll see all the material moving around and this stuff is all, tons of these things, are way huge, bigger than Earth and other planets, okay? Earth is, would be just but a grain or the, one of the smallest tiny little dots that you see moving around here is what the size of the Earth would be compared to the Sun if the Earth was up there. And we should never get that close to the Sun, so... Now the material in the supergiants going through there, that's a different story. And let me show you a photo real fast. I kept on telling you that it'd pull up something. And there you basically have a shot of the sun in the supergiants. Okay? So that's a lot of the material that's getting it. And like I say, tons of this stuff is hella bigger than Earth. Okay? And uh, we, Earth, are just but a speck of any of the tiniest grain that you see out here in this stuff that's moving around the sun. Okay? So that's all material and stuff that's more than likely hitting the sun. And you got to watch for overlays because we know by watching the other ones, the footage that I showed on the last video, stuff that runs into the sun, okay, that is big, okay, and the sun is huge. So all these are big planets. Don't let anybody ever trick you that this is anything with satellites up there. A satellite would be nothing but a speck i.e. as this will show you folks, yes the sun flares and it flares humongous humongous CMEs that we're seeing but it's not the normal CMEs that will show you on the other little footage it's getting its ass kicked, it's blowing its ass, farting its ass off like crazy we're getting these humongous CMEs all the time and this is today, the 29th folks okay so there's going to be more action coming, more CME action and i.e. I'll show you this, the closest and the newest pics that I've got from space okay pictures Okay, so I can move up and down here too so you can see the idea that I'm not hiding anything from you. And as you see, there's a hum humongous planet or something right here at the top of the video. Watch this here up here. There's a humongous planet going to come into view. I'll keep it playing until I think that might have been it again. A pair of planets or something like that. So you should be able to see it right at the top of the video there. And that CMEs when it flashes in big and out like that, that's humongous CMEs that's going on. And I can see some of those planets that I say that these flares are hitting as they come off. You see them hit stuff and roll. When those CMEs come out and roll and hit like that, they're hitting objects and planets in space up there. So massive stuff. All this stuff is way bigger. The Earth is but just a little grain of this here, grain sand that you see. Would be Earth up by the sun, folks. Just a small grain of one of these grain sands. Okay, so this here shot from... H1, high 2B, and basically, I'm beginning to believe that this could be Oricus, folks. 
I think it's Oricus in whatever rotates or it is around Oricus and it's illuminated right now by the sun and the supergiants and all the glare that's in the lights getting put off in space and yes this is Jupiter here folks so you can realize how big Oricus is and yes we look very large right now because of our atmosphere and the illumination that we are getting and everything is getting from the supergiants and those CMEs that are coming around so I'm beginning to think that this is Oricus folks so we got Lovejoy keep this panned out shot so you can see everything pretty good then I can zoom in a little bit but that's pretty much it. Lovejoy is still heading out. And I'm starting to wonder where it is going because the idea that Jupiter is there, folks. That's Jupiter back there that's missing in that shot. So it's really getting interesting to see where Lovejoy is at and the idea that we don't see it on H1A no more. Okay. And then, like I say, the sheeting action, and there's Mars under there. More than likely that's Mars getting hit by a solar flare, folks. Humongous solar flares in the supergiants, and the sun is getting its ad damn ass kicked up there. Okay? It doesn't normally flare like this. This isn't the normal 11-year cycle. If you paid attention to the data in the last past years, it's not. It's supposed to be out of it. Here's the other H1B. So on your Mars, and we still got that black hole in space up there, so I'll pump it to 400 real fast. And we still got our massive object too, our majest the the humongous uh as you can see way out behind all these stars our humongous meatball is still there and then you got to remember also the size of of this find that we had on what we were showing you earlier so there's that big old black hole still just starting to get some light from the cme action finally it's taking a long time to get there so that's something that's very deep dark space up by mars there folks this here cluster here it's going to be really interesting to study those stars in the future i'll end up trying to look that up on worldwide telescope so remember h12a is the one you're going to be looking to keep watching lovejoy take away going away whichever way it's going and we see the head changed around on us and it's going out towards Jupiter, at least that's where it's supposed to be, but it sure seems stagnant out there, but that's a lot of deep, dark space to go through, folks. So, and like I say, I'm really beginning to think that this is Oricus up there. I really believe that's Oricus, and whatever's rotating around with it, or the elements of Oricus. So, you already seen me show you something large, like one of these planets or something like that. Like these planets that go by hit the sun, and there's all kinds of them hitting the sun, folks. Something, dead planets, tons of shit, super giants beating the hell out of the sun, no matter what. Can't be hidden much longer. And no matter what, as I move us, we're up to a thousand percent, but we're right in the middle, like if we were sitting in the sun, the sun would be right here. Okay? In the middle of the sun, and then the idea we move over, and we end up knowing and seeing what we see between Mars and Venus. And no matter what, it's not a projection of the halo of Venus out there, but then if it is, then we have a humongous find of this here planet right there. And even this planet is humongous, and even this is humongous. All this stuff is humongous. If you know the size of Venus, and it compared to Mars, and there you go. Something humongous in between Venus and Mars, and it almost looks like it's got... So... And I can't emphasize enough about the footprint, folks. Big 3.0. And like what I'm saying, folks, the big find we see because the idea that check out Mercury, Venus, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Size to scale. Yeah. Not the distance, but the size to scale. So there is Venus, and there is Mercury, and there is our find. And here is our find, and everything's date stamped, as you can see, 10.09 p.m., 12.29, 2011, and even earlier tonight, I've showed you this find of, there's Venus, there's our time stamp and, and date of the shot, and that is a dead planet. And other, these, this here is an absolute dead planet in between Mars, which that is not Mars, Mars is right there. So let me pull this back down it. And also the possibility that this also could be a humongous planet behind. Could possibly be a humongous planet behind. And we also have a gigantic V out in space. 
And we also have this object. And isn't the supergiant?